In the early hours of June 30, 1934, Adolf Hitler unleashed a terrible massacre within his own ranks. The carnage aimed to discipline the more unruly Nazis, those who were not completely loyal to the Fuhrer. With chilling coordination, arrests were made throughout Germany. The operation was directed against the SA, a paramilitary organization of the National Socialist Movement accused of wanting to overthrow Hitler. Its leader, Ernst Röhm, was arrested and taken into custody at Stadelheim Prison in the city of Munich. While in custody, Röhm endured a desperate situation. His fellow cellmates, who were prominent leaders of the SA, were called one by one and taken outside. Outside, a firing squad awaited them, executing them with a volley of shots. The leader of the Brownshirts, as the organization was nicknamed, patiently waited his turn to die. However, hours passed, and he was not summoned. Finally, two SS officers entered the compound and delivered a message from Hitler himself. In his generosity, the Fuhrer had granted him the opportunity to commit suicide with honor. To do so, they handed him a loaded pistol with a bullet. Now, it was up to Rome to decide his fate. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will tell you everything about the Night of the Long Knives. To understand this story, we have to go back to the early days of the Nazi regime. On January 30, 1933, Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany, although he was not yet the all-powerful dictator he would become later. For the time being, he had to coexist with a predominantly conservative cabinet that did not belong to the National Socialist Movement, and with an army that viewed him with suspicion. He did not have absolute control over the government or the armed forces, and to make matters worse, there was a faction within the Nazi party that was not entirely loyal to him. This group was the fearsome Sturmabteilung, better known by the initials SA, which translates to stormtroopers. This paramilitary group had played a crucial role during Hitler's rise in the 1920s. They were responsible for providing security at events and assemblies, as well as violently disrupting and dispersing meetings of rival parties. Here you can see them patrolling the streets. In 1933, many saw the Sturmabteilung as a danger to Hitler's aspirations for absolute power. The one who generated the most distrust was Ernst Röhm, the leader of the SA, who insisted on merging the brown shirts with the army. This way, the German troops would fall under his command, and he could carry out a second Nazi revolution, something Röhm never ceased to advocate for. In fact, he was once heard saying the following, if Hitler thinks he can squeeze me for his own purposes forever and someday throw me away, he is mistaken. The SA can also be an instrument for controlling Hitler himself. Over time, Hitler became convinced that the SA posed a threat to his plans and that it was necessary to decapitate them before it was too late. In late June 1934, Hitler tasked his trusted men with creating a list of those who were to be executed. Meanwhile, the SS intelligence service gathered information on Rome to fabricate a false accusation against him to justify the massacre. In the accusation, it was claimed that the head of the Brownshirts had received 12 million marks from the French government to overthrow the Fuhrer, an amount that would be equivalent to $33 million today. On the night of June 30th, when all preparations were in place, one of the most violent days in Germany's history began. Accompanied by the police and the SS, Hitler personally flew to Munich and entered the Hanselbauer Hotel, where Rome and some of his followers were staying. It was six in the morning, and they were asleep, so the Chancellor's sudden appearance took them by surprise. Let's hear the testimony of Hitler's driver, who recounts what happened next. Rome came out of his room dressed in a blue suit with a cigarette in the corner of his mouth. Hitler looked at him with a furrowed brow but said nothing. Two policemen took the SA leader to the hotel lobby, where he slumped into a chair and asked for coffee. Shortly afterward, Hitler approached with a whip in his hand and two armed policemen behind him. Rome, you are under arrest. 
He shouted, to which the other replied, drowsily, Heil, my Fuhrer. That wasn't all. During the raid, they found one of the top leaders of the SA, Edmund Haynes, in bed with an 18-year-old boy. Outraged, Hitler ordered Haynes and his lover to be taken to the street and executed on the spot. Both were shot at point-blank range by an impromptu firing squad, becoming the first victims of the Night of the Long Knives. At the same time, orders were given to troops loyal to Hitler to assassinate the most prominent brown shirts across the country. However, the Nazis also seized the opportunity to attack other political opponents from both the left and the right. Let's look at some of the most brutal executions. At 10 in the morning on June 30, Gestapo officers entered the vice chancellor's building and requested a meeting with Herbert von Bose. He was the head of the press office, although he had never supported the National Socialist movement. In fact, he had sometimes referred to Hitler as a vulgar thug. Now, the time for settling scores had come. The Gestapo led him to the conference room under the pretext that they needed to question him briefly. When Bose was about to sit down in a chair, a volley of gunfire struck him in the back. The ten bullets pierced his body and killed him instantly. Half an hour later, Hitler's henchmen went to the home of Kurt von Schleicher, a former German military officer who had served as chancellor before Hitler. Many still considered him a powerful rival who could challenge Hitler's authority. On June 30th, the general was in his mansion talking on the phone with a friend. Suddenly, he heard someone knocking at his door. Without imagining that death awaited him on the other side, the general opened the door without hesitation. A group of men dressed in trench coats with their faces partly hidden by hats stood there. They asked if he was General Kurt von Schleicher, to which he replied in the affirmative. Then, they shot him twice at point-blank range and left him lying on the floor in a pool of blood. Hearing the gunfire, his wife, Elizabeth, went to see what had happened. She had no time to call for help, as the killers, to leave no witnesses, shot her on the spot and fled. Schleicher's allies also fell victim to Hitler's fury. This was the case with Ferdinand von Brito, a military officer and friend of the general, who learned of his death within hours while listening to the radio. Brito's associates urged him to go into exile to avoid being killed by the Nazis. However, he refused, claiming that he no longer had any hope of surviving and that all he could do was wait for death. That same afternoon, while he was at home, someone knocked on his door. As soon as Brito opened it, he received a gunshot to the middle of his face that took his life. One of the most gruesome deaths was that of Gregor Strasser, who was a former member of the Nazi party. Despite his significant contributions, he had left the movement after a bitter disagreement with Hitler. Strasser wanted National Socialism to move towards a more leftist ideology, something that the Fuhrer vehemently rejected. On the day of the massacre, he was arrested by the Gestapo and placed in a cell. Then, while he was facing away, they shot him in the back of the head and slashed his throat. He didn't die immediately but bled slowly on the floor. By order of the SS general, Reinhard Heydrich, they didn't deliver the coup de grace, instead, they let him agonize for an hour. Hitler took advantage of the day of the long knives to settle past scores. One of them dated back to 1922, when Hitler was still unknown. On that occasion, during a street brawl, he had physically assaulted Otto Ballerstedt, a rival politician. As a result, the Nazi leader was sentenced to one month in prison, a humiliation he could never forget. Twelve years later, the time had come to settle his debt with Ballerstedt. On the afternoon of June 30, 1934, an SS squad forcibly entered his apartment and arrested him. They dragged him to the Dachau concentration camp, 
where they put a gun to the back of his head and opened fire. His body was found the next day in a forest grave. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, Ernst Röhm was given a pistol with a single bullet to commit suicide. He was given 10 minutes to do so, during which the killers waited outside the cell. However, when they heard no gunshot, they returned to the cell and found a chilling scene. The leader of the brown shirts was standing, looking them in the face with his uniform open and his torso bare in a defiant gesture. The message was clear, if they wanted to see him dead, they would have to do it themselves. Without a word, the executioners drew their pistols and shot him at point-blank range, shattering his chest and ending his life. The arrests and executions continued until July 2, 1934. When the operation was over, 85 people had been mercilessly slaughtered. The threat of the SA had been forcefully eliminated, and there was no doubt about Adolf Hitler's absolute leadership within the Nazi party. Finally, after so many years, the Führer was on the path to obtaining the absolute power he had longed for. We have reached the end of the video. Leave your comment in the box below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.